Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the next caller. We've got a bunch of really cool ones this week that I really genuinely want to get yeah, to. So I'm going to try yeah. to go as fast as I can. Uh, I'm going to go right over here to line number two. We've got David, pronouns are he, him, calling in from Australia, who says that he believes in the Christian God because he has no choice. David, can you hear us? Hi, guys. How you doing? I'm awesome, hey, man. How are you? Hey, yeah. Hey, I'm from Australia, and it's really early in the morning. so I... We appreciate you getting up so early to talk to us. How you doing? So what did you yeah, want to talk to us I'm, about today? I'm, you said you I'm believe in God because you have no choice. What does that mean? Well, if I was asked a couple of years ago, I would have said that God was all-knowing, all-love, all-powerful, and just. Um, and if I was a good boy and took the Holy Spirit in my heart, that I would go to heaven. Um, mm -hmm. But a couple of years ago, I lost my dad. Um, I went up to the hospital and let him know that I had a Lutheran pastor on his way to um, give him some comfort and maybe give him his last communion. And after 40-odd years of him going to church, he said, I've never believed in any of this stuff, which blew my mind. Mm. So uh, I had a bit of a think about it. Uh, and I've also been battling with this whole Hitler in heaven conundrum. I'm guessing you know all about that. I've heard some things that he was a Catholic and therefore he no. must be in heaven or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like um, deep inside the Fuhrer bunker, he got down on his hands and knees and begged God for forgiveness and took the Holy Spirit. Into oh, the yeah. Ava yeah, yeah. Him and now he's in heaven. Mm -hmm. Right. That's really bugged me for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um it's so, uh, there's a oh, the there's way, a trend about you, there's you know, a trend like that on TikTok right now. People talking apology. about Jeffrey Dahmer because there's a new Jeffrey Dahmer show out, and everyone's talking about Jeffrey Dahmer died a Christian, therefore he's our brother in Christ, and we should all be happy for him. And it's like, all right, <laughs> yeah, well, good on him, <laughs> right? Good on him. So man. back yeah. um, back to your statement yeah, in the queue. So, you believe in the Christian so, God because you have no choice. What does that mean to you? You you have no choice but to believe in the Christian God. Um, well, now, uh, after um, searching, uh, I actually found Hammond Meta on the um, on the on YouTube, and I've been through every single book from Gen One to I think it's twenty three numbers or something. I didn't realize all my time in the church. I didn't know that there was a genocide and and people um, sacrificing mm -hmm. thousands of animals and. I was yep. never oh, yeah. told if you that. We even in Bible study we'd uh, we'd only hand we only cherry pick verses. Uh and if I only ask any questions, I say, Don't worry about it all that, just let's um let's you know, go to the go to the passages that we're reading at the moment. So I'm kinda yeah. in a place now where I think I've been like totally brainwashed. Um and but I still believe in hell, and I'm just absolutely terrified of it. Yeah, well, that's that's a so really really common thing to talk about. Yeah, what what everything you're saying here yeah, is, is it's unbelievably common. We get to... It's. I, I didn't well, think I was that common, but anyway. Yeah, you're well, fine. It's just, I just it's... for a couple of um because I've been. Go on. It seems there's a little bit of a delay that's catching mm -hmm. us up. Uh, I'll just say that what you're saying here is is really, really, really oh, common. Uh, we get this a lot when people talk about like they have um, a you know they they've had this religion for so long and now they're finally starting to question it and ask, but like they've been had this fear of hell built into them for so so long that like you said they've never actually read these different parts of the Bible that are truly genuinely horrific. Uh, you know, there's there's all manner of rape and genocide and murder and torture and 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 injustice and complete insanity from cover to cover in the book. Uh, but you don't ever learn about those things. You just learn about the cushy, nice, feel good parts that get you in there, uh, and then they skim over the rest. And it depends honestly on where you're learning it from. You know, if you're in 
you're in Australia being raised there in, in Christianity. You learned all about heaven and all about the forgiveness and the love and the, and your, your preacher was probably somebody who was very worldly and compassionate and maybe kind of use some lingo that the kids were using nowadays. Whereas if you know, you're in some impoverished country somewhere else in the world that the church is currently trying to colonize, every bit of hellfire and brimstone and murder and torture is heaped upon you to make sure that you are brought in with the same fear that's keeping you in right now. It's just a different tactic on which direction or which order they give you these I things. Um, but I think you should be buoyed up by the fact right. that there's you know countless atheists who have gone through the exact same thing that you're going through at this moment, just coming to terms with the fact that this is something you've never really had to think about very hard. And the second that you do, you realize it's it's horrific. Um, and now you're having to fight not only you know the fact that you're intelligent and you're able to, to kind of pick this apart and say like, okay, obviously these things don't make sense. And even if I accept that these things are real, I don't know if I want to be a part of it. That's the thing. Even if you could prove to me that God is real, I don't want anything to do with that guy. He sounds like a monster. Um, but also you're having to deal with the yeah, indoctrination well, side of it I where you've been taught about... your whole life that it's a bad thing to not believe and you will be punished if you don't believe. And uh, I'm here to tell you, you have a massive yeah. community of support behind you at this point in your life of people who have been exactly where you are and can surely, surely tell you that it gets easier and easier the farther you go along with it. I can remember uh, well, the first time I heard the word atheist, I asked my pastor what was an atheist, and his uh, examples were Charles Manson and Ted Bundy. And I thought, yep. God, I hope I never met an atheist. Yep. <laughs> and well, actually, was, Ted oh, Bundy's supposedly in heaven, too, because he um, repented famously and prayed with Charles uh, yeah. with, uh, Dobson, James Dobson, and repented at the end of his life, and he's famously in heaven as well if you believe mm -hmm. in that, nice? that doctrine of repentance. So you, you've let go of your faith, David, but you feel like you still have the remnants of the fear of hell and things like that. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. 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 Just so yeah. Um, I, like I said, it's not even, it's not really even uh, Pascal's wager. It's, like a, a lack of free will, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the moment. I, it, like I, I either believe well, or I go to hell. There is no yeah. free will in that that sentence. Right. So you're you're absolutely correct as far start? as that's concerned, because it's the same thing. You know, it's, it's it's you're calling it a choice, and one of the choices is to be tortured for eternity. It's not much of a choice, is it? Um, but of course, you know, the the, the obvious question is it's not much of a choice. Why, yeah, why don't you feel that same fear about any other religion? Like there's mm -hmm. there's countless other, you know, the, the Islam, for example, has a very definite hell for non-believers, and you're definitely not Muslim. So like, what's going on there? Why are you? Why aren't you afraid of that? How many nights of sleep do you lose over the the Muslim hell hell that you're not, you know, potentially going to be a part of? Yeah, well, you don't even think about that, do you? When you when you're sort yeah. of so yeah. so indoctrinated against one one particular religion that all the others just are just ludicrous and, yeah uh, exactly and so like that's like that's said, something that i hope i've been i hope you can watch him kind of, and i watch you guys yeah i, yeah, I, I hope guys, you can apply but, that same uh, kind of thinking like to said, where I'm you're at now is it like yeah. it's just it's the same thing as if you it was something you didn't believe in if i talk to you about you know pick, pick a hell and in, in, in throughout all the mythologies out there you know if, if i warned you about tartarus you'd probably laugh at me but like there were people that were concerned about it at one point or another <laughs> and so like now as you're you know kind of critically evaluating this um and learning that you know not only is there no reason to believe in this god but also there's absolutely no reason to worship it uh even mm -hmm. if it was real then i i think the next step in, and I, I hope it's one that comes to you quickly would be just if if this hell exists then the thing that controls it is a monster. There's no reason. And also, if God is all-knowing and all-powerful and can see inside your brain and knows your heart and all these things, do you really think you're going to pull one over on him? You think you're going to be the guy who bullshits him enough and says, like, well, I, I technically believed and it kind of works, you know? Hedge so my bet. I say yeah. go all in. 
if you're if you're going to do it halfway, do it all the way. Because God yeah. says in the Bible, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you from my mouth and you have to be fervent and fiery and all this stuff. So if you're already at the doubting phase and the criticism phase, you've already lost the battle. Why not say F you and just be done with it and start comparing this hell to all the other hells that yeah, you're not think, afraid of? Uh, I watched a, yeah, I've watched a couple of um, debates, well, so-called debates with the, these presuppositionalists. Cy Brood and Kate or somebody, that, they're almost embarrassing, actually, uh, as far as the fear's perspective goes, because they don't even, they have a starting point that they won't even move from. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, Matt um, debated one of those, but the guy basically just evangelised. He didn't even yeah. offer any sort of um, arguments whatsoever, so that was yeah. sort of eye-opening. Well, it is, and it uh, sounds to me like David I'm a, that you've I'm a loser. pretty, Not enough you've in pretty much heaven. you've pretty much came to the conclusion. It sounds like that you don't believe the Christian God, and you're just concerned about what the ramifications of that are. And as as Forrest was saying, it's going to get easier the further removed you are from it to let go of these fears and these concerns about the consequences of your disbelief. I mean, I've been out of it for a dozen years now. I don't think about hell one second. I don't worry about hell. I don't worry about a God coming to get me. I don't worry about a boogeyman. I don't worry about a devil. None of that shit makes any difference to me. We talk about these things on these shows because so many people are still struggling with it, but I don't struggle with it. And I think the further removed from you, from this that you get, you're going to be better and better, David. You're going to have less concern for the fear of hell, you're going to have less concern for God getting getting you in any way, and uh, it just you're going to see that it doesn't make sense on any level. So good for you for letting go of this stuff, and I think that you'll find that a year from now, two years from now, you'll be better off. Absolutely, I, I second every bit of that. Like I, I'm you're you're doing an amazing forward. job already. That's for What's that? I have a degree in herpetology, which you, you should know what oh, that nice. is. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Well. You're studying reptiles and amphibians. Love, That's huge. I love to have talked to Matt about snakes. I love snakes. They're wonderful. They're the most beautiful <laughs> creatures on the planet. So I, I got such a bad rep. got such a bad rep in the Seriously. Forest. Exactly. During my first biology uh, degree, anyway, I worked in an animal sanctuary and I took care of a bunch of snakes. And like so many people are convinced that they're all slimy and they're all vicious and they're these crazy things that are going to chase you around the room. Slimy. And it's because of that kind of teaching. They're wonderful creatures. They're hugely important for their environments. Yeah. yeah well, thank you so much, ten Dave. And deadliest snakes in Australia. So. Cheers, yeah, yeah. guys. You have a good one, hey? Huh? Thanks for calling, uh, thanks buddy. Thanks so much, Dave. Okay, take care. Unbelievably pleasant to speak to. Thank yes. you so much for calling in.